Today we're going to be durability testing a brand new modular flagship smartphone, the Fairphone 4 5G. But first I have a little story time and a desktop tour. As you can see behind me, this video is sponsored by GT Racing. Behind me is where I edit a lot of my videos and I spend a ridiculous amount of time in this corner. This right here is the computer I built, and this computer, along with these two monitors, I've been using for about three years or so. And they've been working great even after all this time. Right here is where I do my voiceovers, this little microphone. It's a simple Samsung Meteor mic, and I can just swing this arm around, put it in front of my computer, and do all the voiceovers from my videos. I found that inexpensive things get the job done just fine without needing to spend a bazillion bucks and GT Racing has that same philosophy. They've sent me the rest of this setup so I can show it off to you guys. The desk has a carbon fiber aesthetic, along with plenty of RGB gaming lights, because we all know RGBs improve FPSs. It's also got a headphone holder and a spin out drink holder, because it's modular and efficient like that. It's large enough to hold my ultra wide gaming monitor and strong enough to hold 180 pounds. You might be wondering why I have a shattered GoPro on my desk. Well, I actually took this to the Tesla Cybertruck launch about two years ago. And I tried to get a really cool shot by placing this in the road and hoping that the Cybertruck would drive over it. Well, it turns out the Cybertruck actually did drive over it and smooshed my GoPro with its 35 inch tires. The camera was recording and I'll try to place some of that for you right now, but it did stop recording as the truck was about five feet away or the footage was corrupted at least. Oh, was that it? It's totally dead. But yeah, you win some and you lose some. And uh, speaking of winning, the chair I'm sitting in is also from GT Racing. Nothing improves crosshair accuracy like a stylized gaming chair. It's pretty firm and has the ability to lay completely flat with the attached leg rest. So you can take a little nappy nap between gaming sessions. It can hold up to 300 pounds, and, crazy enough, has dual Bluetooth surround sound speakers in the backrest. I'll have links for all this stuff down in the video description, including the RGB keyboard and mouse. But if you or a young gamer in your life want a lot of RGBs really quick at a good price, GT Racing has you covered. Of course, you can get just a few lights if intergalactic space rave isn't your thing. But if you're going for that psychedelic utopia vibe, I'll leave all the links down below. They do make great gifts, just saying. Now it's time to see if this modular flagship can survive a durability test. Let's get started. The Fairphone 4 5G. While smartphone manufacturers might not specifically plan for planned obsolescence, they sure don't do anything to mitigate it. Fairphone is different. This baby is designed from the ground up to last as long as possible and has a five year warranty to prove it. Inside the box, we get the phone. No additional cords or charging bricks, just the phone itself. With its triangular camera lens on the back. It does come in all of your favorite colors though, as long as your favorite colors are gray or green. It's also surprisingly heavy out of the box, which is totally fine by me. It makes it feel solid. But is it solid? There's only one way to find out. The screwdriver you see on the table next to me actually comes shipped with the phone. Cause Fairphone knows that you don't really own something unless you can fix and repair it. The back panel is removable. Along with everything else in here, it's all modular, including the battery. All 3,905 milliamp hours of it. This has definitely been the easiest battery replacement of 2021. Thumbs up for that. The rest of the components are held in place by 12 silver screws. Since this phone is designed to be taken apart, we won't be compromising the structural integrity if we just take a little tour first. With the screws gone, we can take a look at the bottom module. It's got the loudspeaker and coin style vibrator motor attached to it, along with some waterproofing mesh at the speaker opening. This phone is IP54, so there are some protections against spraying water, but not submersion. Not too shabby though, considering there is no glue holding the back panel or the screen. I'll unplug the three camera ribbon cables up at the top, just like little Legos. And then the upper module is free. These modules aren't the bare bone components though. They're more like building blocks designed to be easily replaceable. 
by people who have no experience. The USB-C charging port, which can charge at 20 watts, is also modular. We have the earpiece and front-facing 20 megapixel camera, which has internal electronic image stabilization. We can tell that the inside of the phone is made from a solid block of metal. Scratching is scientifically enlightening, but we can also visibly tell by the mill markings from the milling machine in the battery tray. This is a pretty solid upgrade from last year's Fairphone. You might be asking yourself, hey Jerry, what about the screen though? We do know that screens are usually one of the most expensive and hard to replace components in a smartphone. But if we remove the eight black Phillips head screws with that same screwdriver, I can run my fingernail around the exterior edge of the phone and pretty easily separate the screen module from the body. It has one little ribbon connector on this side that plugs into the motherboard. I bet an expert screwer could replace the display on this Fairphone 4 in about five minutes. Interesting that there's even a copper heat pipe inside to help dissipate the heat from the internal processor. Well, we have proved that it's modular. Now it's time to see if it survived so we can try killing it again. With the screen situated and the earpiece, front camera, and charging port all plugged in, we can plop the camera module and loudspeaker module back into place with those 20 screws holding everything together. The battery can slide in and the back panel can clip down into place. This reminds me of how all smartphone repairs were about 10 years ago. And everything still works. Let's see if we can make it not work, starting with the scratch test. You know the drill, plastic is a two or three, glass is a five or six, and sapphire is a level eight or nine. Fairphone says they have Gorilla Glass 5 on this flagship, and we can confirm that with scratches at a level 6 with deeper grooves at a level 7. The teardrop notch up at the top contains the 25 megapixel front facing camera that we saw from the inside earlier. There is no plastic speaker grill, just a long slit up at the top for the earpiece, aesthetically following the example of other modern flagships. The size of the phone are made from metal. You can see the glint of silver showing up through the gray anodizing. The recess power button does double as a fingerprint scanner, and we have two metal volume buttons up top. The upper edge of the phone is made from metal, along with the entire left side. The little notch at the bottom edge is to facilitate the removal of that back panel. The bottom has the USB-C, loudspeaker, and microphone. The rear camera lens might look like it has three perspectives, but it's actually just a 48 megapixel ultrawide a 48 megapixel main camera with OIS, and the last little circle is for the 3D time of flight depth camera and dual flash, but still an improvement over last year's singular camera. Fairphone has pretty bravely decided to take on all of the injustices of the smartphone industry at once. Whether it's mining, recycling, repairability, or fair wages, it's a big task. They are also electronic waste neutral which means for every phone they sell, they recycle an equal amount of electronic waste. And last year they sold about 100,000 phones. So no small amount. You can check out their website for the nitty gritty, but combining sustainability, recycling, and repairability, it makes the planet pretty happy. For a flagship, the Fairphone 5 does have a 6.3 inch 1080p 60Hz display, which lasts about 10 seconds under my lighter before the pixels go black and turn off. We don't see IPS displays as often anymore. The iPhones and Samsungs of the world have moved to OLED for that higher refresh rate and brighter colors. But if we're being honest, the average non-nerd wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Finally, the bin test. What's the point of a woke, environmentally friendly five-year warranty if it can't survive a little abuse? And, well, when bent from the back, there's hardly any flex. And we get the same structurally solid results when bent from the front. Pretty impressive. The metal modular Fairphone 4 survives my durability test. The biggest issue I see with this phone, though, is that it's currently only sold in Europe. I think there are a lot of people here in the USA and other places who might not care about the latest and greatest flashy thin trend and just want a phone that works good for a really long time. And that five year warranty is a really long time and all for less than 600 bucks. I'm a huge fan of where Fairphone is headed. Nice work. 
Do you prefer new and flashy or solid and sustainable? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Come hang out with me on Instagram and Twitter. And thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.